talking about all the places Linux will go. And we have Jim McQuillan, who is one of the founders, if not the founder, of LTSP, uh, which is the Linux Terminal Server Project, uh, talking to us about SSL. I know there's a lot of folks who have played around with SSL and have deployed SSL. And uh, I don't know about you, but for me, it, it's kind of a, a black art of getting SSL correct. Um, Mug. And, yeah, December it can, 2015. It can be extremely <coughs> usually requiring a few chickens and uh, other assorted blood sacrifices in that. So, it's going to be in the are you ready? I'm ready. Are you as ready as you'll ever be? All right. There are. So, Mr. McQuillan. Uh, silence my phone. Hint, hint. <laughs> My phone goes off pretty much every day. All right, let's see. Let's see if I can get plugged in up here. Oh, one of these sides. Yeah, it's over here. So if you move on, keep some nice energy. How's that? All right. Works. Okay. So, who's using SSL? All of us are. Come on. Personally or right. professionally? Ever. Ever. Right? Ever. You go to uh, you go to Amazon.com. You're using SSL. Well, you do it. You actually go to buy something. Okay. Okay. So I should be a green card on this. Um, SSL or TLS. Uh, TLS is the is, is what they call it now. I still call it SSL. So when you hear me say SSL, think TLS. Uh, SSL is uh, secure socket layer. TLS is Tonight we're going to talk about uh, certificates, how to, uh, uh, what a certificate is, how to create a certificate, how to sign a certificate, how to even install it in a batch and, <coughs> and test it, and uh, we'll, we'll even go into how to tune your Apache config to make sure you've got the best possible settings you can uh, to, to get the most secure connection you possibly can given the software you have. Uh, First of all, disclaimer, I'm not a security expert. I just use this stuff to make my, make my stuff work. Uh, use it at your own risk. Um, like I said, I'll, I'll loan you my
my duct tape if everything falls apart. Okay. So tonight we're going to talk about uh, self-signed certificates. What they are, you've probably heard of those, right? Who, who uses self-signed certificates? Okay. Uh, certificates signed by your own uh, uh, certificate authority. How many people are doing that? Great. Great. Professionally, <laughs> Wow. Good. And of course, certificates signed by a trusted uh, root certificate authority. Uh, that would be if you go to uh, VeriSign and have them sign your certificate, or CA Cert, or <coughs> I'm sorry, Entrust, Entrust, or. Uh, there's a ton of them out there that will do it. Uh, uh, Komodo is one that I've used. Um, there's a bunch of them out there that will sign your certificate. Uh, they make it pretty easy. Of course, they're willing to take your money to do it. Uh, if, you, if you want to have a good, secure site out on the internet that's for public consumption, you pretty much need to go get a, a trusted signed certificate from one of those people, and you have to pay money. And finally, we're going to talk just a little bit about Let's Encrypt. Uh, this is something that I've heard a little bit about lately. And then uh, last Thursday, they announced public beta. Uh, we'll, we'll talk about that uh, towards the end. I've only got about 10 or 11 slides here. So we're going to whip through the slides really quick. Then we're going to get to the command line and really do some stuff. Okay? I don't want to, you guys can read slides all you want. I'm not great at producing slides. So I'm just going to kind of cover the, the, the bullet points on the slides, and then we'll get into if I'm not talking loud enough, please say so. I don't have a microphone up here. I, hopefully I don't need one. You guys hear me okay? You're fine. Yeah. So some terminology. SSL certificate. Right? What is it? Small data file. Uh, usually they're between 1,000 and 2,000 bytes long. Um, digitally binds the uh, your public key to an organization. Uh, it establishes identity, that's the subject of the key. It really kind of uh, uh, <coughs> prove who you are. Um, it's issued by somebody, um, that's the issuer. And it's used to start the process of setting up a secure connection uh, between the client and the server, really between two endpoints. We're, we're talking about <coughs> certificates tonight, really, as it pertains to web browsing. But certificates can be used for a lot of other things, too. Uh, you can use a certificate to sign something. Um, I, I, I work in the medical industry. And I, I just recently finished a project where we had to do something called direct, which is... Anybody here in the medical world? No. Have you heard of direct? It's the ability to send clinical documents between two entities, between a doctor's office and a... Between two doctor's offices. Okay. Send, secure, send your health records securely. Uh, you bundle it up in an XML file, you uh, sign it, and uh, stick it into an email as an attachment, a uh, secure attachment. Uh, it's basically S mine. So it's similar to PGP then? Well, sort of, yeah. I mean, you're encrypting it. You're not using PGP, you're using SSL certificates. Uh, PGP is just a different way of encrypting things. This is using public certificates, so I can go fetch a public certificate of another doctor's office, and I can use that to encrypt the, the document. Uh, I forget what I do, sign it, then encrypt it, or encrypt it, sign it. Anyway, the document is signed by me. It's encrypted using somebody else's public key, and then I, just, I use the email that document to that other office. And then they open it. They can open it, or, and, and really it goes through a, a you know, they don't open it up in their outlook. They, it gets fed through a process into their system, and their system will uh, decrypt it using their private key. It will check the signature using my public key, and if everything's kosher, it will uh, accept that document and import it into their system, and then they can trust that, that document is authentic. So that's one place you can use certificates. Another place is I could, I could uh, set up a secure uh, connection to my Postgres server. I use Postgres all the time. A lot of people use Postgres, people use MySQL. I'm pretty sure MySQL supports this as well. Oracle supports it. Uh, Postgres, I use PSQL as a command line utility to interact with the database. Uh, 
I've got a Postgres server running, it's a different machine, I can set up a secure <coughs> connection between the two using SSL certificates. Same certificate I'm creating right here. Uh, we're going to create tonight, we can use uh, to encrypt a, a Postgres connection. Um, I've played with that a little bit, it's pretty neat. Uh, I'm not doing any connections outside of my network, so I'm not currently using that in production, but I'm probably going to start doing that. Um, and of course, certificates in, in, used for uh, web servers and web browsers. That's what we're going to talk about tonight. Uh, before we get too far into certificates, though, we've got to talk just for one slide a little bit about encryption. Because certificates, remember that third bullet point, uh, certificates are used to start the process of encrypting traffic between the client and the server. Uh, it's important to understand or, or just vaguely understand the difference between asymmetric and symmetric keys. Asymmetric is a key pair. Uh, I generate, and I will do that tonight, I'll generate a private key and a public key. I can give you the public key. Uh, I can use my private key to encrypt data that you can decrypt with the public key. You can use my public key to encrypt data that only I can decrypt with my private key. It's a two-way street. Um, but if you encrypt data with my public key, nobody else can decrypt it. It's really important. All right? Uh, if I encrypt data with my private key, the whole world can decrypt it because my public key is public. It's easy to get my public key. Uh, my web server will happily serve that up to you. Um, uh, symmetric encryption is really the, the oldest encryption there is, it's basically you generate a shared key and the two parties, the two endpoints, share the key. It's really a password. If you wanted to use symmetric encryption on a file, you would encrypt the file and put a password on it, just like if you were using PKZip. Right? That's symmetric encryption. If you have a file, it's got a password, you send the file to somebody, you call them up on the phone and you tell them what the password is. How many people have done that? Right? You don't email the... <laughs> The, the password along with the, the file that you just attach, right? Some people do, they don't understand, but uh, that's symmetric encryption. Uh, you can use OpenSSL open for that as well. Um, uh, <coughs> the, the difference though is asymmetric is very robust encryption, it's really strong encryption, but it's very, very slow. It takes a lot of CPU power to encrypt and decrypt things. So you don't want to do a lot of traffic using asymmetric encryption. Symmetric, on the other hand, is very, very fast. It doesn't take much CPU power to do it. But it's, it's, not, as, uh, it's not as secure because that shared key is shared. Right? Uh, there's the, the chance that somebody else is going to get that key. But it is nice and fast. Um, and you know, anybody with that shared key can decrypt that, that data. So let's get into the certificates. That's, that's the end of encryption. Uh, we'll, we'll talk a little bit more about it in a little bit. But, uh, a certificate, self-signed certificate. Uh, that's a certificate where uh, every certificate has a subject and an issuer. Um, uh, a self-signed certificate is a certificate where the subject and the issuer are the same Entity. Okay, it's self signed. Uh, and that's different from uh, a certificate that's signed by a certificate authority. Uh, I think I could probably demonstrate this better than, than talk about it. I'm going to do a simple little exercise here. If I, um, I'm creating a certificate. see what I'm writing, but I'll show you in just a second. Let's see, who's my issuer? All right. The certificate is for me, Jim McQuillan. The issuer, um, Brian. We're going to make Brian the, the issuer, okay? Brian. Brodsky. B-R-O-D-S-K-Y? Yep. Okay. Brian? 
just sign this? Sure. Just sign your name. Just anywhere down here. Okay. You're not going to scan this, are you? No. Hmm. You see that uh, check? Not here. Okay. So this, yeah, this here know. is your certificate. It's got an issuer, it's got a subject, and it's signed by Brian. Okay? Create another certificate. There's an issuer, a subject. Okay, this time the subject is Brian. Oh, I'm spelling it right. Let's see, this time the issuer is, we're going to make it Jim Glutti. on that. John Hancock. So we have another certificate. The issuer is Jim Glutting, the subject is Brian Brodsky. And I, I could go on all night doing this. <laughs> yeah, right? please don't. <laughs> I don't feel like that. Go on all night. We're going to do one more. Oh boy. Certificate. <sighs> Let's see. Actually, I think I need to do two more here. Issuer. Ah, let's see, who's my next guinea pig? Uh, Jim, James has too much. How about Dick Williams? Issuer, Dick Williams. Subject. Can you guess who the subject is? Dick Williams. Jim Bluting. <laughs> but before I go too far, I'm going to create one more certificate. <coughs> Somebody already. One last one where the sub where the issuer is Dick Williams and the subject is Dick Williams. <coughs> I hope Dick can hear me. You with me, Dick? Yep. Alright. So now we're gonna have you sign the certificate that Jim Gluting is the subject. So if you using your pen. Okay. And we have a self-signed certificate that isn't signed yet, but will be. All right, now we have a chain of certificates, All right. a chain of trust, a certificate chain. Oh, let's see. Here's mine. This is the one that says, I am Jim McQuillan. It's signed by Brian. Here's the one that says, Let's see. Here's one that says, here's Brian's certificate. This says, he is Brian, it's signed by Jim Gluting. Then we have Jim Gluting's certificate. It says, he is Jim Gluting, signed by Dick Williams. Then finally, we have Dick Williams' certificate that says, hi, I'm Dick Williams, signed by Dick Williams. Okay. He's the trust anchor. He's the end of the line. He's the Vera sign, or the end trust, or the the uh, thought, or the anybody else that issues certificates. The authority. The authority. He's the certificate authority. Very good. Make sense? Mm -hmm. So with that, you can establish a chain of trust. Right? I say I'm Jim McQuillan. You guys don't know me. Right? A couple of you do. But a lot of you guys don't know who I am. I can say I'm Jim McQuillan. You, you can trust me. Or you could ask Brian. You can say, Brian, is that really Jim McQuillan? You say, yeah. And then somebody else will say, but is that Brian? <laughs> Jim Booty says, yeah, that's Brian. Dick Williams says, yeah, that's Jim Booty. And, <clears throat> and we trust Dick Williams completely because he's the root. Right? And he's the treasurer. Yeah. He's the treasurer. <laughs> <laughs> he's the guy with the, follow the money, right? He's the guy with the money. So we trust him. That's exactly how. Uh, the chain of trust works with certificates, right? So did I cover that trust entity? Yeah. Uh, let's see. The certificate authority is the trusted entity that issues or signs the digital certificates. Uh, web browsers have a collection of CA certificates, right? Go 
open to your web browser. How many people are using Chrome? Go to your web browser, your settings, if you're using Chrome. Go down here to advanced settings. Go down here to HTTPS slash SSL. Go to authorities. Oh my goodness, there's a ton of them out here. I mean, there's probably 200 of them, more. Okay, and trust, I just saw you trust. A whole bunch of them. Okay, those are built into the browser, or when I say built into the browser, they're shipped with the browser. As a, as a, there's a little database that comes along with the browser, and those are shipped there. Fortunately, you can add to it. That's what we're going to get into in a few minutes. Yeah, John? Yeah, uh, it seems to me that it, there are probably different requirements for certainty about who somebody is. There is. And you'd like to know, if you're going to trust the train of trust, you'd like to know how certain each of the parties are about who this individual is. Did, did they meet well, on the street, like, or, did, like, or do they have their firstborn in, in a crib yeah. someplace that guarantees they, they haven't fit to you? Well, there's, like PGP, like, like when you, when you uh, set up a chain of trust with PGP, there's like five levels of trust you have, right? And I forget what those five levels are called, but it's like I, I kind of trust this guy through, I, am, I completely trust this person. There's four or five. SSL certificates don't really have that. There's, there's really kind of like two levels. Uh, there's, there's the normal certificates that you can get and pay the regular amount for, the 100 to 300 bucks a year for. And then there's the extended value, uh, extended verification. Is that what it is, the EV certificates? Validation. You'll pay more for those. And they'll dig deeper to make sure you are who you say you are. Uh, just to get a regular one, I've, I've done it a few times to get a regular certificate from, uh, uh, like last time I did it through Komodo. Um, they check a couple of things to make sure you are who you say you are. They'll, they'll uh, look at you, you know, you, as you apply uh, for the certificate, you have to uh, give things like your, your phone number, which is kind of questionable. <laughs> Uh, you have to give your, uh, when I did it a couple of years ago, gosh, maybe this is seven or eight years ago, I had to give my phone number, my address, um, of course, uh, my name, so they checked, the, the name of the website I was doing, so they checked DNS, they called the phone number to see if I answered, uh, they checked the address with the, with the, uh, the corporate address with uh, the state of Michigan, um, and then, that wasn't, that wasn't quite enough, then I also had to have a document notarized by a notary public. Mm. Uh, so I went to, and this is just for a standard certificate, this wasn't an extended valid, uh, verification. I had to go, uh, I went to my bank, because I know the manager of my bank, and she's a notary public, so she didn't understand what it was she was signing, or, or you know, they put a stamp on it. She didn't really understand web certificates and stuff, but she knew, you know, she knows that she's Notary Public, so she did her little notary thing. Then I mailed that in to Komodo, and that was it. And I had a, a uh, there was a real level of trust there. They, they trusted that I was who I said I was, and I was going to use that certificate for a site that I actually own. Um, I think that's the kind of the kind of uh, verification you want, right? You don't want uh, some Joe Schmo out there. Uh, saying that they're Amazon.com or Ford.com or anybody. So how did the, um, so when this person signed something they didn't understand, how did they know it was you? Well, I had a banking relationship with them. I had, uh, 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 for ID, I had my driver's license and I had my passport. Uh, in fact, that's, isn't that like a certificate right here? I, I don't normally carry this with me. I just <laughs> brought it tonight because I wanted to show. This is indeed a certificate that says I am who I say I am. Right? <coughs> it's got my picture on it. That helps. Uh, it's issued by a, a root authority, right? the United States government. Right? People trust that. I, I, 
<laughs> but still, I can go anywhere in the world and show this as my passport, and they will look at it, and they will trust that I am who I say I am. Um, so, you know, my, my banker, you know, they, they look at my account, they see I have accounts, you know, they see I have some money, they, they, they work with me for a while, so that helps. Uh, I think a, uh, a notary public has to have some level of trust. If you just <coughs> called up one on the phone and said, hey, you're a notary public, can you, can you uh, sign this thing for me? I, I would question the validity of that notary. But doesn't the notary basically notarize your signature that you are who you say you are based yeah. on your signature proof? Yeah, it's yeah, I mean, it's mainly, it does, they don't care what the document is, is what I'm saying. It's more about who you are and, and your signature is authentic. Yeah, they don't need to know the details of what right. the document is. Right. You're exactly right. Yeah. I had to sign it, they had to stamp it yeah. with their little punch thing. Anyway, that's uh, kind of the level of scrutiny I think to get a real certificate. Don't let this scare you off, though. Certificates are, are a good thing. So, you know, don't be afraid of it. Um, so moving on. Uh, certificate chain, we pretty much covered that, right, with these pieces of paper. We established our, uh, our certificate chain. And uh, I'll point out again, the root certificate, uh, Dick Williams, uh, has a self-signed certificate. He is who he says he is, and we trust him. Okay. Uh, open SSL. Move on to the, the, the fun parts. Uh, OpenSSL is a set of tools. It's a library and a set of tools uh, for doing uh, uh, secure in, uh, encryption and, and certificate creation, validation, signing, all that kind of stuff. Uh, how many people use OpenSSL uh, at the command line? We all use it every day. Pretty much anything you touch is going to have OpenSSL. Right? I, I've got an iPhone somewhere over there. <laughs> It's got open SSL. Apple is using open SSL for their security. Uh, I think even Microsoft's uh, SSL stuff has some open SSL in it. Um, you know, we're all interacting with open SSL all the time. But, uh, I saw a pretty good show of hands for people that actually use the command line stuff. Uh, so that's good. We're going to get into some of that for just a few minutes. Any questions so far? Anybody asleep? <laughs> Uh, and I wanted to touch on Let's Encrypt. Uh, that's a, uh, we kind of talked about this whole chain of trust, uh, and we're going to talk about how to generate certificates and stuff. Uh, Let's Encrypt is a, is a new effort. Uh, it's, it's been on the scene for a year, year and a half. Uh, they just announced public beta last Thursday. Uh, it's, it's a site that will make it much, much easier to do certificates. Great for uh, using SSL everywhere. If you have a web server, you should be using SSL no matter what you're putting out on that web server. Um, uh, uh, let's, let's Encrypt is going to make that really simple to do a, an SSL cert. You don't have to go to your bank and get something notarized. You don't have to show them your uh, passport or driver's license or any of that kind of stuff. I, I think the end result is you end up with a secure connection. Not really sure how much I trust the validation part yeah. of it, though, that says you are who you say you are. What, what they do is uh, uh, you have to put something in your DNS server. They, they basically are assuming if you have control of your DNS, you are who you say you are. Yeah. In which you know, there, there's a lot of things out there. If you want to use Gmail for your for your uh, for your own domain. You you own the domain. Um, uh, I'm sure there's other services as well, but uh, basically if you have control of DNS, then you must be who you say you are, and you can get a certificate. Mm -hmm. um, it's kind of interesting. They issue certificates, uh, they're, they're fairly short-lived certificates, I think they're 30 days. Uh, Evan, is that, is that right? You, you, you're the one that turned me on to this. I think it's 30 days. I read I, they made the announcement last Thursday. I read about it on Friday, the announcement, and I went looking at the website, and I'm pretty sure I read 30 days. I went back to the website today, and I could not find <laughs> mention of how long the certificates are good for. But the really important thing is, 
you install a client application on your server that will fetch, uh, it will renew that certificate automatically for you. It'll go out to the Let's Encrypt site and, and generate a new certificate every 30 days or re-sign the same certificate, I guess, uh, uh, every 30 days and reinstall it in your, in your Apache server for you. Um, so you should be able to set it and forget it. 